The Memphis Grizzlies last game beat the Warriors coming back from 19 points and winning the game in overtime. They've been very impressive this season and have been an amazing team to watch. Though it was dumb, many people expected this team to take a step back this year because they traded away Jonas Valančiūnas. And this Grizzlies team has made it obvious that they're here to compete. Today I want to talk about why they're the best young team in the entire league. So let's get into it. Leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I drop regular NBA content and with the NBA season going on, this should interest you. So do subscribe to the channel. Let's move on to the video. The Grizzlies are coming off a season in which they made the playoffs and pushed the best regular season team in the Utah Jazz to 5 games as an 8th seed. The major catalyst for this was their franchise star who played out of his mind in the playing games and the 5 playoff games, Ja Morant. They also made multiple moves this off season following this playoff series. They had a complicated off season and made a lot of trades. To simplify it, they traded away Jonas Valančiūnas and a pick, which became Trey Murphy, for another pick from the Pelicans, which turned out to be Zaire Williams, Stephen Adams, and Jared Culver. And they traded away Grayson Allen too for financial reasons. These off-season moves have looked amazing so far for the Grizzlies. The reason Valančiūnas was traded away was so that younger guys on this team can get more shots for their development and with the Grizzlies having multiple guys who were due for a breakout season this is a very important move to do. And guess what? This has worked to absolute perfection. Desmond Bain, DeAnthony Melton, Ja Morant and even and even Jaren Jackson Jr to a certain extent have been more than making up for the loss of Jonas Valančiūnas and we'll talk about all of them in this video. The main piece they got back for Jonas was Steven Adams, who has been amazing for this team and much better stylistically. Him at the elbow making plays for cutters helps guys on this team improve as off-ball slashers, especially guys who have the potential and physical tools to be elite in that department like Ja Morant, who has been great as a cutter this year and a massive reason for that is Steven Adams making plays at the elbow. He's also weirdly a great end of the shot clock post player like when the shot clock is running out and he has no good cutters which he can find he's just so massive and stronger than everyone else he plays on the post for like 3 seconds backing down his defender and gets up a pretty decent shot which is for some reason very funny to me Adams is also one of the strongest screen setters in the entire league and when you have such a dominant pick and roll point guard in Ja Morant there is always something you can have he's a great offensive rebounder and is the best putback player in the league right now statistically and from the eye test he's very solid defensively and gives the grizzlies strength and size on matchups jaren jackson junior might find it hard to guard and he can be the body to play at the five until jjj is less injury prone and starts fouling less and can actually play at the center position for a extended period. Jared Culver is a guy who hasn't even cracked the rotation yet for this team and probably won't be a part of this team unless he shows signs of becoming something useful for them. So there isn't really much to talk about him. So let's talk about the rookie who I have been really high on ever since he was drafted, partially because I'm a Grizzlies fan, but I still really like Zaire Williams. Zaire is an incredibly raw rookie. who's been picked so that he can hopefully be the player the grizzlies are hoping he should be 2 to 3 years down the line he is a pretty tall player positionally with a decently large wingspan similar to the player he is most compared to in brandon ingram he really has the potential to be brandon ingram in my opinion his jump shot is really smooth and silky but very inconsistent as of right now he has a lot of potential off the dribble and getting to the basket as he is very athletic too He's good on defense already and should only get better on that. As I mentioned, he's still very raw. 
so isn't really having a very efficient season right now and frankly is having a terrible season efficiency wise but the flashes he has been showing and the potential with him and jamuran together is insane and as the season progresses i expect him to develop into at least a good 3 and d player because he's a good defender already and if he can just get a consistent three point shot he can be a good 3 and d player who will at least be in the rotation and in the future live up to the potential the grizzlies and i think he has so in the start of the video i mentioned that the memphis grizzlies have the best young team in the entire league i'd like to make it clear that i'm not talking about the specific young core because when talking about young cores it means i'm specifically referring to the core young guys of the team in which situation i would probably pick picking the hawks as the best young core in the league but the hawks is a team like an entire team including all their older guys are middle of the pack when it comes to average age as a team while the grizzlies are the second youngest team in the entire league this makes me call the grizzlies the best young team in the league though they might not necessarily have the best young core in the league if that makes sense so with that out of the way let's talk about two major young players who have been absolutely spectacular for the grizzlies so far and have been a major reason for their success desmond bain and d anthony melton desmond bain is one of the most underrated guys in the league ever since he has been drafted and he's been getting more and more respect as the season is progressing last season his role was pretty limited and was restricted to a spot up shooter He's taking twice as many shots this year and is showing off his offensive arsenal. He has one of the best pump fakes in the entire league. Like I remember so many plays where he has just made simple pump fakes and players like even LeBron James have gotten faked and he's a great and much improved off the dribble shooter which takes advantage of his defenders falling for his pump fakes. He's shooting twice as many three pointers on better efficiency. His ball handling skills have been much better this year. and is probably the second or third ball handler of the grizzlies right now and is quite over qualified to be the third ball handler on this team and that is it a problem for them he's been great defensively too and has guarded wings on opposing teams night in and night out and will be guarding the best opposing wing on the opponent team night in and night out until dylan brooks is back desmond bain is absolutely breaking out this year averaging like 19 points as a creator for himself and is one of the best floor spaces in the league at the big position if he keeps up this off the dribble game he's going to be one of the best in the league at his position and in this department the main reason the anthony melton and desmond bain have been so much better this season for the grizzlies is the fact that they've been getting more opportunities and more shots The reason for this is as mentioned when I was talking about the Valanciunas trade the fact that they're getting more shots and Melton's aggressiveness and play this season are a proof of that. The biggest question for DeAnthony Melton coming into the season was whether or not his three point shooting was real and if he could maintain that for the season too. And from what we've seen so far it is. Melton has been amazing this season. His fit next to Ja is perfect. and is the secondary ball handler in the team right now and probably the secondary ball handler moving forward. He still shooting 40% from 3 this season and has been quite consistent until like last game. His off the dribble game too has been spectacular and him getting more shots on just as good efficiency is helping his breakout. Defensively too he has been amazing guarding the best guards in the entire league and the best guards of opposing teams night in and night out. Last game itself he guarded Steph Curry as good as anyone can in the second half of the game. As long as DeAnthony Melton is consistent this season and can do great job as maybe a sixth man when Brooks is back because Melton is going to be amazing for this team offensively and defensively. So let's talk about their injured player in Dylan Brooks too. Brooks is an amazing piece of this Grizzlies squad. He's a great to at least an elite defender who can lock down just about any guard in the league right now. He has a tendency to foul a lot, but he's getting a lot better at that part of his game too. On offense, he's a very streaky shooter who when hot can be really great. Though he might feel pretty one dimensional in contrast to DeAnthony Melton and Desmond Bain, his defensive versatility and the value he provides on that end is so good. It probably gives him the starting spot over Melton as Melton is a good player and fits the mold of a six man. 
the grizzlies have one of the deeper teams in the league they have an amazing bench and a good backup for every single position this is one of their biggest strengths and one of the biggest reasons why they have been good in the past two years too in the point guard position they have jamarant my favorite player in the league right now and a guy who i'll be talking about later in this video in tyus jones one of the more underrated point guards in the league who's been great at his role this season and his entire career for that fact he's a great ball handler for a backup and a very good playmaker as of right now he's a redundancy for this team with the breakout of deanthony melton and desmond bain at ball handlers he probably won't be on this team much longer but he'll still be a great backup point guard and give this team a lot of depth options at the shooting guard position, they have DeAnthony Melton, Dylan Brooks, and guys like Desmond Bain and Zaire Williams who can play at this position too. At the small forward position, they have guys like Desmond Bain again who will be starting for them at this position this year, and Zaire Williams who can also play at the three of the bench, and slow mo himself, Kyle Anderson. Kyle Anderson is a great backup forward who does a bit of everything for this team. He's a great positional playmaker, a good three point shooter, and a good defender. He's a decent post player and can make multiple plays from this elbow position like I mentioned with Steven Adams. He hasn't been great so far this season, but he's a good player, so he's either going to be good for this team or can get traded to more of a contender because the wing versatility on this team is already so good, they can manage even without Kyle Anderson and can use him as an asset. At the power forward position, they have Jaren Jackson Jr. One of the better young players in the league, who we will also get to later, and one of the best backup power forwards in the league, Brandon Clark. Clark is a good positional defender and a great role man and finisher in the rim. He was a good shooter as a rookie, but slightly messed it up with his new shooting form, making him worse from the three. But he still allows the Grizzlies to run a lineup with him at the four and Jaren Jackson at the five, which makes their offense significantly better. And defensively, allows Jaren Jackson Jr. to be a defensive anchor while at the same time being able to switch everything. There's a lot of versatility to this team on the front court as they have four rotational blicks, including Xavier Tillman who can play for them and this gives them a lot of lineup flexibility because each of them are very good at their own regard and provide very different things which the Grizzlies can use at any point of time at their own regards. So now finally, let's talk about the two franchise cornerstones of this team, Jaren Jackson Jr. and Ja Morant. Ja Morant has been nothing short of extraordinary this season, and he has taken the leap people keep talking about. He's had another worldly season and in my opinion, is the MVP frontrunner right now. He's been much more aggressive this season than he was last year at scoring. This has a lot to do with the confidence he got from the Jazz playoff series when he was so exceptional at the rim against the best rim protector of our generation in Rudy Gobert. So this season, he's been using his amazing speed and athleticism to have one of the best and most unstoppable finishes in the entire league. He has always been an amazing playmaker and his amazing rim pressure gives him a lot of scoring gravity and as he penetrates into the lane generates a lot of open looks and this allows him to make plays for open shooters. And his improved shooting this year from 3 and him for some reason suddenly becoming an elite 30 put 3 point shooter right now, he has become so much harder to guard. One of the craftiest players in the league at getting to the basket and a good shooter while being an amazing passer and playmaker. This makes Ja one of the most exciting young players in the league, who's taking a massive leap this year and is raising the ceiling of this team as the days pass. I can talk about Ja Morant all day. As I mentioned, he's my favorite player in the league right now and I absolutely love him. But let's move on to his partner in crime, Jaren Jackson Jr. Jaren has been slightly underwhelming this season. He hasn't taken the leap people expected him to take this year yet, but I am really not that worried about it right now. Because defensively, he's better than ever. The Grizzlies are 16.2 points better per 100 possessions with Jaren on the floor. He's been exceptional for them defensively, especially in crucial situations like the overtime against the Warriors the other day. He's also been playing at the center position for them quite a lot, and that experiment has worked out for them quite well. He's showing how good of a defensive anchor he can be in quite brief moments. Offensively, he's been very inefficient and not really that great as an individual guy to say the least. 
his shots should come around at some point so i'm not really concerned about that also just the space he provides for jamoran to do his work is ridiculously valuable for the grizzlies and the offensive rating numbers just prove that the main reason i'm not concerned about jaren jackson is that he hasn't really played many games yet in his career for a player to improve he needs time and as long as jaren can stay healthy this year he'll have a great development period like there's going to be a month or two stretch in like january or february where jaren jackson is going to completely go off and do not be surprised with how good of a player he's going to be in that period that's my favorite thing about this team The second best player hasn't even been playing that well yet. Their best perimeter defender hasn't even played yet. So there's a lot this team can do and be better at. And though they haven't done that yet, they still beat in the Warriors, who in my opinion are the best team in the Western Conference right now. They push LeBron James, the greatest player of our generation and the Lakers to the absolute brink and beat up on the teams like the Cavaliers and the Clippers who are worse than them. and as playoff teams they should beat up on worse teams and they did exactly that and this team is so young and already so good they're the second youngest team in the league with one of the most exciting young stars taking a massive leap right in front of our eyes the potential for this team is amazing and this is the reason i believe they're the best young team in the league right now so yeah that's all i have for you today be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already